What's up, Cog gang? Welcome back to some mechanics and materials. So we have a problem here, right? So we have this uh, two-beam figure here, and we're applying a force to it. And our goal is to find the largest force that we can apply at P for any of the segments fracture. So we're also given a graph, a stress-strain diagraph, right? And we see here that there's a different line for tension and a different line for compression. And so what we need to do is we need to analyze these two beams and figure out which one's going to break first. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's to first, let's draw a force body diagram. So let's draw this force body diagram at point B, right? This is B, and then this is C, and this is A. So let's just assume, uh, we know P is pushing down like this, and then let's assume everything's in tension. Uh, we can change that later if we find out. So we're gonna assume that BC is in tension, so this is gonna be force BC, and then we're gonna have this one, which is force AB. And we know that this is a three, four, five triangle, right? We can see pretty easily that this is three, this is four, and this is five, right? So let's take the sum of the forces now to find out which, which each one of these are. So sum of the forces in the y direction, we know it's equal to zero, we're at equilibrium. It's gonna be negative P minus force AB, and then we just have to take what's in the y direction, so three fifths. So of course we can rearrange this, so we're gonna get that force AB is equal to five thirds, but negative P. So this tells us that force AB is in a compression. Okay, so now we can do some of the forces in the X. You know that a rule is equal to zero. So it's gonna be negative force BC minus force AB, but we have to take uh, three four-fifths, right? Four-fifths. So we're solving for force BC now, so force BC now let's plug in what we know here. So it's going to be equal to, uh, so we're going to have a negative, but a positive. So then it's going to be 5 thirds P, but then multiply that by 4 fifths. You're going to get that this, the 5's cancel, and you get that force BC is equal to 4 thirds P. And this is in tension because it's a positive number. Okay, so we found our two forces now relative to P. Now we need to go ahead and find the normal stress and see which one's going to break first. Right, so our equation for normal stress is just the max is equal to force over area. So we're given the areas for both of these. So we know the forces in terms of P, and now we just need to know when is it gonna break, right? <clears throat> so what we need to do is look at our stress strain diagram. So if we look at it, I'm gonna have it on the screen somewhere. I guess it's probably gonna be right there, so I'll get out of the way. In tension, it can go up to five KSI uh, before breaking, but in compression, it can go all the way up to 25 KSI before it breaks. So depending on if we're in compression or tension, it's gonna use a different value for the, or, uh, you know, uh, max. <clears throat> so let's start with AB. AB is in compression, so that tells us it can go all the way up to 25 KSI before it breaks. So let's just start with that. So 25, but then let's do 10 to the third because it's in KSI, not KSI. And we're looking at force AB. So let's plug in force AB, which is 5 thirds P. 5 thirds P. And then the area for AB is 1.5 inches squared. So we get here, and this tells us that P, uh, if we're looking at AB breaking first, is 22,500 pounds. So that's one, that's not our answer, right? We don't know if that's the only answer. We need to look at force BC first, and then see if that one breaks next. So force BC is in tension, right? We calculated that this is in tension. So we need to use a max of five KSI instead of a max of 25 KSI. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna do this equation again, but with BC. Uh, so then we're gonna do, uh, so not 25, but just a normal five. Five times 10 to the third is equal to, then we know for BC, four thirds P over its area, which is four. Solve for P from this. And you're gonna get that P is equal to 1,500 pounds. So this P is less than this P. So this tells us that because this breaks earlier at a less weight, that this is gonna be the determinant one. BC is gonna break first, and therefore it's gonna break at 50,000 pounds. So that's how you solve this problem, right? Not too tricky. Uh, yeah, just want to make that force body diagram. So if you have any questions, check out my channel. Uh, ask them in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.